All right, look, y'all struggling. I'm gonna I'm go through. This is the first question on the relative frequency uh, worksheet. So you can steal at least a couple answers from me. First, for my people that are struggling with the first worksheet, filling out this weight chart, basically, you're always gonna look for a box like this. This is a good box because it's the only box in this row that's not filled in. I need something and seven to add up to 32. My something has to be 25. If you're not sure, if you can't run the numbers in your head, grab a calculator. You could guess and check. Something plus seven is 32 or work backwards. 32 minus seven is 25. All right, but we're looking for boxes. All right, I, this is not a good box because I have two boxes in this column that don't have anything in them. I have two boxes in this row don't have anything in them. I have to find boxes like this. I, I, can't, I can't use the row to get it, but I could use the column. Everything's filled in that column except for that box. So 32 plus 13 plus 59 plus 16 will give me my overall total. This is a good box. I've got everything in the row except for that. 10 plus three is 13. Now that I filled that in, this can be a good box. Seven and three, 10 and 13, 23. I need five more to get up to 28. Now. This is a good box. Five and 11 make 16. Okay, so it's, it's, it's game-like. Each box leads to another box. When you get to your very last box, that's a check box. Did I do everything right? If I did, then I should get the same number in my column that I need for my row. So 46, 57, 67, 87, 92. 92 from my column, 92 plus 28 equals 120. Cool. I, I've got that filled out properly. All right, so that was the, that, that's the regular two-way frequency table. Now, I told you there are three different ways that you can turn a regular table into a relative frequency table. You can turn this into a relative frequency table by considering the overall total and saying what part or what percent of that total is each piece of this. The way you do that is my piece, whatever my number is, in this case up here 25, my piece divided by the total, part divided by whole, times 100 gives me a percent. So I'm going to start to fill some of this out. I'm not going to fill the whole chart out. I'll leave the rest of that to you. But this box here, 25 is my original number divided by 120, that's my, that's my total number that responded to the survey overall, and then times 100. All right, you don't have to write this part. You don't have to write the steps. Type it in a calculator, and I get 20.8, da, 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 all right? That's close to 21. So I'm going to call this 21%. Right? 21% of the people that we talked to or that we looked at were eating fries with their fingers when we, when we talked to them. Uh, if I do this 13, burgers with a fork, 13 out of 120 times 100. Type in this, 13 divided by 120, part divided by whole times 100, and I get 10.8, all right, it's about 
percent. That was 13 burgers with a fork, 11 percent. 11 percent of the people we talked to, they were eating burgers with a fork at the time. Okay. I'm going to finish this burger row. 46 out of 120. 46 divided by 120 times 100. 38%. And if I do 59, 59 divided by 120 times 100, we get 49%. Notice this when we get to the total row for this relative frequency. 38 plus 11. Totals still add up, even though it's for six. Okay? This box has no meaning in a, in a relative frequency chart, just for your information. All right, so that's style one of relative frequency. It gives me the percentage for each of these guys. All right? Style number two of a relative frequency chart says, I don't care about the overall number. I care about the categories, one of the categories. So what if the category I care about is food? I want to explore individual foods by themselves without considering the rest of the foods. So I want to look just at nuggets. For example, okay, what is the breakdown for nuggets? What percent of people eat nuggets with their fingers? What percent eat them with their fork? All right, to find that percent, I'm going to be saying part divided by whole, but in this case, my whole. My whole value is this 13. Everybody that eats chicken nuggets, there's only 13 of them. All right? So same calculation, part divided by whole times 100. So 10 divided by 13 times 100 All right, will give me my percentage. And that means in this box, 76% of the chicken nugget eaters were using their fingers. 3 divided by 13 times 100. 23% of them were using a fork. If I do this table correctly, the numbers in my nuggets row should add up to 100%. All right? Because this represents all the people that were eating chicken nuggets. Now, if you add these, you're going to get 99%. Okay, it's close enough. Uh, the reason you were getting 99 is because I rounded them. I rounded both of them down. So we lost a percentage point to round. But that's the process. Now, if I move to a different row, I have a different total. There's 59 people ate burgers. So when I look at the burger row, I'm going to be doing 46 divided by not 13. I'll be doing 46 divided by 59 because I want to know out of the people that liked or out of the people that were eating burgers, how many were using their hands only to eat them. All right, we got, looks like 77%. 77%. Okay, that was 46 divided by 59 times 100. All right, that's this table. Okay, you're using the total at the end of the row as your, as your divider, as your divisor. The last way that I could make a relative frequency chart, what if, I'm, what if I don't care about the individual foods, I care about the individual method of eating, All right? I care about, I wanna, I wanna just look at fingers, All right? 
what's the breakdown of people that are using their fingers? What foods are they most likely to be eating, least likely to be eating when they're using their fingers? So, very similar to this, all right? I am gonna look at just the totals at the bottom of the column. So, 25 out of 92. 25 out of 92 times 100, okay? 27% of 100%. people that eat with their fingers were, were seen eating fries, all right? I'm about to, about to do this whole fork column for you. For the fork column, it'll be seven divided by 28. We'll use 28. Seven out of the 28 people who were eat, using a fork times 100, 25% of people that were using a fork were eating fries. All right, three divided by 28 times 100. Ten or eleven percent of the people using the fork were eating nuggets. Thirteen divided by twenty-eight times a hundred. Forty-six percent. And lastly, other five divided by twenty-eight times a hundred. 18%. All right, reason I wanted to finish a whole column for you is when we used the totals at the end of the row, I said you can check if you did it correctly because your rows should add up to 100%, okay? When we're using the total at the bottom of a column, we can check it because our column should add up to 100%. 25, 36, 76, 82, 90, 100, 100%. Uh, marker no longer working, but column should add up to 100% if you've done it correctly and you are basing your percents column by column. Okay, that's the three different ways that we can have relative frequency show up. And really, the follow-up question would determine, the follow-up questions would determine which one do we want to use. If I'm asking a lot of follow-up questions, I care a lot about the method that people were eating in. This one will make the most sense to you. If I care a lot about the food that people were eating, this one is going to be more helpful. It's going to make more sense. If I'm looking at an overall picture, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, or, or if I'm looking at individual box by individual box. If I want to say, how many people do I expect to eat burgers with a fork? If I find a thousand people in this, in, in a new study, this will be more helpful. I'll say, burger, fork, 11% of a thousand, 11% times a thousand is, um, 110. I would expect to find 110 people. All right. Hope that helps some of you that were lost, confused, or absent.